you've become one of the most renowned uh, people in your field. The work that you do is just incredible for humanity. How did, did you know that this was going to be your path in eighth grade and the, you know, 12th grade and college? Like, when did you finally say, this is the path for me? Well, the path for me to become an astronomer happened like a couple times over, actually. The first time it happened, I was 16 years old. I had gone through a, I had this like really strange, not a super great upbringing. Okay. I guess maybe I can just briefly review that because a couple of yeah. things were really relevant. Well, I grew up in inner city Toronto, which is pretty safe inner city, okay? Okay. But it wasn't like super great area. And I had, I literally had the evil stepfather. He was torturously mm. mean, basically. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But one thing that happened there was as I grew older, I realized him being super mentally abusive to me. Oh, I just realized he was just like a pathetic old man. Eventually I grew up like, and he couldn't hurt me anymore, et cetera, et cetera. That was good because it meant I could go out into the world and um, I'm only being factual. I'm not judgy. Okay. It being like kind of an old white man's world. It's changing. Yeah. It just meant that like I had no respect for that kind of authority. And that mm. is incredibly helpful if you have to challenge ideas. Yeah. Because if you're brought up in a culture where you have to just always agree and believe with the people in charge, it's a problem because how can you break new ground? So I saw that part of my childhood was really fundamental in that I learned to not trust and believe. Mm. And that was yeah. very helpful. On the That's... other side, yeah, I was trying to be positive too, you know, because I can't do too much. No, the, no, we can go. We can go yeah. everywhere. This is great. Well, yeah, we just, it was, I, I, we can weekends, dive in the depths. Yeah. Well, on weekends, I lived with my my actual dad, my biological dad. Okay. And he's not alive now, but he was very eccentric. Like he would call me eccentric, but in his case, he believed in reincarnation, and he believed in a lot of things that I don't know if this is going to bring the giggle factor out, but he loved me so much. He believed we would be like reincarnated together, like we would come back as business partners or brothers or husband and wife or whatever. So that challenged me at a young age to read books because I wasn't so sure if like I personally believed this idea of reincarnation. It just didn't seem right to me. Mm. So like at age 11, there I was checking out a bunch of books. If you have the internet today, if you know if people's 11 year olds are allowed to like freely explore the internet, we didn't have internet. So go to the library, check out some books. I'm like, mm, I don't believe this. Mm -hmm. But that made me like think for myself because I was exposed to a lot of really out there ideas that I had to work through on my own. So I would say those two combined things in my childhood were like super helpful. Fast forward to when I was 16, I um, lived in the city and I walked through the university campus to get to my high school and I saw a sign for an open house at the university and I went to the Department of Astronomy. And when I was 16, I learned I could be an astronomer for a job. And wow. That was one of the top, like top 10 days of my life easily. So oh I, my was, goodness. I, we, you just didn't know it was a thing, but you had all no, these converging yeah. interests in it. Yeah. Perhaps you even well, knew what, it was a thing, but just not a job. Yeah, I didn't know you did this job. So I rushed home to tell my dad and you won't believe the answer I got. My biological dad, who I spent weekends with. Yeah. Just said, no, he said I couldn't. He's like, Sarah, you have to be able to get a job. And his voice was rising and support yourself and not rely on any man. Mm. It was like, wow. So he told me I couldn't be an astronomer, not because he was sexist against women being astronomers, but because he didn't know if they could get a job. Wow. Like, you know, it doesn't set, like, being a parent myself now, you do want your child to go out and be self-supporting. <laughs> so I could see where that was coming from. <laughs> yes. and he seen, even though this was a long time ago, women who relied on their husbands and they get divorced and then what? They have no education, no skill. Their life is over, basically. Yeah. So he really wanted to make sure I got I could go into an area that I could get a job in. So that was that. And I really wanted to respect my dad's wishes. It's a tough life when you, yeah. But ultimately, nah, I just realized at a young age, I should found something I love doing that I'm also good at and I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Wouldn't you know... You were good at it then. Was this, you got into college, you started to take different classes, you had a keen interest. Yeah, it, it wasn't developed. Really that great at my classes, but I got a summer job in astronomy, like at an observatory, a local observatory, and I just loved it. My work was very basic and tedious, and eventually I became able to do physics pretty well. Like, you know, I wasn't like the top physics student, but I realized it was for me. That was probably around in college, like upper years of college. I decided it was going to be what I was going to try, try to do. 
Yeah. And then uh, the desire took over and you, you, you know, the passion, the dedication. And, and well, it was really and, slow because, you know, you're seeing the end result of decades of work. We don't have like all the ups and downs in the story, but they're definitely right. a, a tough path. It definitely isn't like super straightforward, easy, but eventually, yes, it became an amazing thing.